Sean Sport in podcast form. Can I move on from today without um, uh, sharing my um, pleasure of watching Damien, uh, Damien Oliver be the world's greatest jockey for such a long time? Oh, okay, right. Cause, sorry, he's officially retiring, yeah? Yes, he's officially retiring at the end of the Perth Summer Carnival, which is great news because we get to see him come over here. And he's done that for a lot of times. How, um, old, how old is he? He is 51. Oh, Okay. He has ridden 128 Group 1 victories, which is the highest in Australia. He's had over 3,150 winners, and he's won the Melbourne Cup three times, Caulfield Cup about four times, I think. He's won the Cox Plate a couple of times, and he's won the Golden Slipper amongst all the other things that he's achieved in his life. It's an amazing career. pretty good record, yeah. And everyone will remember the time he rode Vintage Croc to victory after his brother Jason passed away yeah, and we saw the movie course. about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it, And that's when he, he looked up to the sky yeah. at the conclusion of the race and you go, oh, God, that's heartbreaking, isn't it? Yeah, and, and I think the one thing about um, being a jockey, everybody would they wouldn't know how difficult it is and how fit and strong and, and you have to be. And how dangerous it is. And how like dangerous. The, Good you, point they're there. literally, lives are on the line. Most definitely. Yeah, yeah. And he's had some hor- horrible flaws yes, along the way. Yeah. You know, he, he could have very well uh, en- ended up in a wheelchair, and, and many have. And as a lot of people have lost their life in this game. So it's a really, really yeah. difficult job. But, yeah, congratulations to Damien. He's a ripping bloke. He's really great friends with guys that we own horses with. So yeah, right. he came over to ride our horses back in the day. And uh, and to get to know him, even though he's a Mad West Coast supporter at the time, was, uh, it was <laughs> Still awesome. Still is, I bet. Still yeah. is. No, he, he certainly is. He loves his surfing. He loves yeah, right. playing golf and loves surfing. And you wonder, though. He'd have a strong core. That would, yeah. be, that would be good for surfing. Most definitely. And you wonder, um, at 51, what do you get to – are you are you actually retired? Where's he going to go? They haven't well, said well, anything. he's obviously just going to play golf and go surfing. It's, it's, I mean, it's, it's, like, I mean, the obvious thing is to go into commentary and that sort of thing. You can mm. imagine him being a part of the team, say, at the Melbourne Cup coverage and that kind of thing. That's an obvious, yes. obvious yeah. thing you could do. I've seen a lot of um, uh, retired jockeys can uh, getting involved with apprentices these days and yeah, helping right. them out. And they have sort of staying in, in the industry, but yeah. But the, you know, and yeah, he'd only have to do that kind of stuff part time. Yeah, you'd imagine if he's won 128. Well, he's got a bit cash. One, there's a lot of money involved. Yeah, there. I'm so, sure he's fine financially. Yeah, his super's fairly healthy balance. God. <laughs> God, it's going to be yeah, it's going to be a great time for him going forward. Cause yeah, he's still got so much of his life to live. Yeah, yeah, and now he can eat. Yeah, and now he can eat. <laughs> Woohoo! God, what a moment in time. So, um, well done to Damien Oliver. He's been yeah. an absolute superstar of uh, the horse racing industry, and um, yeah, we wish him all the best. Who are you going to idolise now? So many. It's James McDonald at the moment, who's Is the it? absolute gun. Right. Jamie Carr, who's the female jockey yeah. who I've loved for a long time. Since I um, followed her in South Australia, she's coming back from a fall. She had concussion that yeah. ruled her out for quite some time. So I'm hoping she'll bounce back and we can see her in the Melbourne Spring Carnival dominating as well. Oh, that's the sound of Fox footy. Catch finals footy in the summer of cricket on Fox Cricket. Available on Foxtel and KO Sports. One man who will be covering all the finals is the great man, Jonathan Brown. Brownie, good morning. Great to be on. Um... I'm, I'm I'm feeling nervous for you. I can feel the nervousness even on the East Coast, mate, because word's got around that uh, Sean McManus is having a shoulder off operation <laughs> and traditionally yes. known as the second worst operation uh, behind the one I had recently. Or not recently, but after my New York Marathon when um, my bum blew out. <laughs> That's right. And I had to have a, remember I had to have a hemorrhoid operation. <laughs> yeah. So um, shoulders and hemorrhoids, no good. So, Brownie, um, my thing's going to be in my neck. I'm not. My shoulder operation was going to take place last year, but I end up kiboshing it. Just toughing it out. And um, doing other stuff. But take me back to the moment where everything went awry for you when you were doing the marathon and the feeling. <laughs> yeah, well, it wasn't a great feeling. Um, <laughs> yeah, about 10 k's to go, really trying to push it, just sort of digging deep into the old competitiveness macker, yeah. um, which I thought I'd lost from the day I'd retired. But... So now I've got to have a crack, and I got through, and I thought that doesn't something doesn't feel right. And uh, obviously, in the in the hours post that, uh, I realised when I was having a shower and in the bath, and I don't get too graphic and all those sorts of things. Uh, but I realised that's not normal. It's not normal to be. Uh, it's not normal for when you enter the bath for it to be clear water, and when you get out to be bright red. Yeah, uh, no, that can confirm. Not oh, right. Brown, no, um, and all I'll say is yeah. the first time, uh, well, about the first month after that operation, every time I'd go to the toilet, 
was like, uh, as I'd go to sit down on the toilet, it was like you were about to jump out of an aeroplane without a parachute. <laughs> Brownie. <laughs> this a I would suggest. A lot, a lot of anxiety. A lot yes, of anxiety I can imagine. I would, I would suggest if that, is, if that is happening to your body, you're running too hard, Brownie. Yeah, yeah I know. That's I'd your body saying absolutely hard. not, no, never again, isn't it? It is. It is a message, isn't it? But to yeah. us knuckleheads footballers. Uh, no, it's just uh, for some reason it just doesn't get through. <laughs> yeah, that's really interesting, Brownie. Um, last night on uh, AFL 360, though, so they had Jack Rewalt wide up for his last mm. game, and yeah. in the last couple of, I think it was the last quarter, maybe Brownie, he took a massive hit from one of the Kangaroos players. It was mm. a great tackle, but he mm. and, and he copped it anyway. Jack got up and he was a bit like, oh gee, but anyway, he's got to play the game and carry on. And it wasn't until last night where I first time I'd heard this that he is um, broken a rib rib. and he's in all sorts of trouble. But he he really didn't flinch much, Brownie. Yeah, it's amazing. Isn't it amazing the mindset you get into sort of when you are competing, I suppose, and that's your job. You just build this resilience and you quickly lose it. Don't worry about that. You can tap into it. I mean, <laughs> that white line fever goes away, does it? <laughs> it does go away. I was playing. I was playing rugby league with a young fellow on the beach the other day, and he's only ten years old, and he hit me with a couple of tackles. And honestly, I think I, I couldn't handle it. I said, "Mate, let's just go back to playing touch." You do lose it quickly, but it is amazing, and that's why. How good is it when we actually get to um, mic the players up? Yeah. It's a, it, it, it gives a greater understanding to people that obviously haven't been able to experience that, but also to us guys that have uh, and girls that have spent time out there in the uh, you know in, in I suppose in the theatre of sports, just how brutal it can be, and how to, how often quite often, quite often you would just take it for granted. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah. One thing that I always notice with you on the field is you. This face would come over Brownie mm. when he was on the field, mm. like yeah. like a haze. <laughs> and because he over used to face. spit in his hand and rub yeah. rub them together, and then with it's his... like a ball j- shortly before it yeah. charges. Yeah. That kind of vibe. So yeah. does that happen at home at any stage, Brownie? <laughs> with you know the kids and the misses getting on your nerves, yeah. or do you walk in the house like that, ready for a battle? Well, I, I just had a battle. It's, it's, I'm glad you asked that because I, I come into the office and fortunately enough, you know, Nova's, Nova looks after us and I've got a little home studio over here. And we're, we're in the, we live in the Gold Coast now. Yep, so, yeah. um, and it's, sort of, it's great when you guys call, it sounds like I'm sitting in the studio with you in Perth. Mm. In reality, though, I'm sitting in the Gold Coast. However, I went to click in. Uh, and put my headphones on. Well, no headphones. The kids have jumped into the office. They've stolen the Nova headphones. They've done this, <laughs> done that. So now I'm on the phone. Um, so I've yelled out to I've yelled out to Kylie, and uh, you know, and Kylie's saying, "Well, what are you blaming me for for taking the headphones?" So now the family's on my nerves. Now yes. my wife's not talking to me. So yep. it can quickly escalate in the household, can't you? And then you just realise where we stand in the pecking order matter. Where oh. we do stand in the pecking order of family. Uh, the family affairs. Was I it ever in doubt? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, last time I had a, uh, a knee op, which is not uh, oh, long yeah. ago, Nathan's mum was thinking about coming and get me because no one in my household would come and pick me up. I was at a hospital for that- hours. I remember I had to catch a taxi from the hospital. <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that so that might be you, Maka. Just yeah, getting it's a low no, point, isn't it? Isn't it? There's nothing lower, yeah. and you never you never feel lonely other when you're standing <laughs> out the front of a hospital after an operation. You think geez, everyone's going to be here giving you great sympathy whilst you're waiting for the cab, and then the cab's running late by about 15 minutes. No more lonely place. <laughs> no, That's no, when you appreciate how, how loved you are by your family. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Oh, Brad, but, uh, how, many, how many operations did you have during oh. your career, Marco? Um, I average, oh God. So what? It, I reckon I had about five. So plane. knee recos, two. Had a couple of knee recos, a couple of yeah, uh, the cartilage ones. Yeah, osteitis a, pubis. When I turned up, first of all, to the Dockers, when I'd finished Waffle, they said to me, uh, the, before I played a Waffle finals, they were like, I kept saying my, my heel was no good. And they said, oh, it must be a deep bruise. Anyway, when I got to the Dockers, I went, oh, bit of a x-ray. So I had a fracture in my ankle. And so before we actually started pre-season, I was straight in to get that done. Yeah. Anyway, I was about five or six straight up. But then nose since job. I finished, nose jobs. <laughs> since I finished, I'm nearly one a year. What about you, Brownie? <laughs> well, 
Well, apart from, the, apart from my backside getting tidied up, I've had a pretty clean bill of health. Uh, I've still been retired eight years. It's just a <laughs> bum blowout. I had 16 during my football career. Did you? And, uh, yeah, the most memorable, I remember the great feeling about, um, you know, when you're about to go to sleep, they put you to sleep on yeah. the operating table. Now, there was about six of us boys that had to get done on the Wednesday after our last game. All had to have minor knee operations, whatever it may be. So we had the same surgeon, Jimmy Fardors, uh, up in Brisbane, and he lined us up. He had the six of us lined up. So we ran a book. We, we put some money in as to who could actually stay awake the longest, the longest. after your knees. So just to give you yes. put the uh, special sauce in you. Yes. Yeah, and so we had to do the count. Oh, oh yeah, it was absolute. It was a furious count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. <laughs> <laughs> And I tell you, I, I, I think I, I think I got the chocolates that year. I think I might have beat Pikey by a couple of seconds. Uh, wow. so, and well, you guys will turn anything into you're... a competition, won't you? Absolutely. So uh, so that was good. And um, yeah, that was the most memorable thing. Actually, tonight, probably I'm not sure if there's any many Lions supporters over in the West Coast, but tonight we've got the Brisbane Lions Hall of Fame and 20-year anniversary for the uh, premiership uh, in 2003 against Collingwood. So oh, yeah, yes. I'm looking forward to tonight. It's going to be fantastic. I get to induct in one of my great mates into the Lions Hall of Fame today. So uh, all the players are going to be there. Bossy, Craig McRae, everyone's flying up to Brisbane for the night. Um, it's going to be a fantastic uh, celebration of uh, that great team. Can That's we awesome. ask who you're going to be inducting? <sighs> I'm inducting... Uh, as long as you don't tell me, like, inducting the great Uncle Martin Pike. Oh, remember I know, Pikey? Yeah, four wasn't premierships. That, wasn't absolute. The four premierships. The only four. He insisted on. You look at the premiership and that third one. Everyone's got three fingers up. Pikey's got four. Oh, yeah. Just to uh, rub it in, cause he played with one at North Melbourne, but and he insisted on us, us younger blokes. You know, we had to address him. We could never call him Martin or Pikey. We had to address him as Uncle Martin. <laughs> <laughs> that perfectly not here. It's a unit. Absolute unit. Oh. Absolute unit. So, uh, what, what a legend. He was pretty good on the lip as well. He's one of the great sledges. I'm not sure if you copped any from him over the journey, uh, Macca, but no. um, he, he was pretty brutal on the lip, that's for sure. No, I've tried to stay out with him a few nights, and that wasn't a good you idea. can't. Yep, can't keep up. Well, that's me concern tonight. You think, yeah. geez, I've, I've got a couple of days off. I'm going to get caught up with Uncle Martin tonight at the bar, and you're right, because he just refuses to go on. <laughs> Pikey, so uh, it's, that, that'll be a little bit. That'll be a little bit concerning. You don't want to look around the bar late at night, and there's only one other person standing at the bar because you won't be home for another couple of days. <laughs> so true. Brownie, love you. All right. Mate. Hope you resurface right. by Father's Day. Good on you, Brownie. <laughs> Thanks, Beautiful. Mate. Good on you. All the best. See you, mate. <laughs> Quick around the grounds to kick things off. It's been a tough day at the US Open for the Aussies, particularly the men who are stinking it up. Jason Kubler, James Duckworth, Tanasi Kokonakis and Alex Vukic have all lost their first oh. round matches. I mean, they're going to pocket a hundred grand for doing it. I but still. Thanks for coming. Uh, Chris O'Connell progressed, but he beat fellow Aussie Max Purcell. <laughs> so it couldn't take we were a guaranteed trick. somebody making the second round. <laughs> I think Ola Tomlanovic had a win, so yes, that might have been one. She's come back yep. from a knee injury. Yep. So that was good news on the women's side of the draw. But, wow, in one foul yep. swoop, all our men are gone. Pretty much. Just like that. Except for Chris O'Connell. Is Chris O'Connell, yeah. We've got a couple others. Um, Demon Orr still to come, yep. I think. Um, yeah, but a- anyway. Anyway. God, these guys are just hanging on, aren't they? <laughs> Tottenham last night went down to Fulham in the oh. League Cup penalty shootout. And I bring this up because they lost at 5-3. Of course, Ange Postacoglu is the saviour, apparently. Mm. But he couldn't get him over He's the line He's the messiah. Here. And um, our producer, Amy, and her husband, Alex, are the biggest Spurs Massive fans, so they'll be Spurs filthy about nuffies, that one. Yep. Look and at we, her face. She's furious. And we also learnt that Sasha Glasgow will be leaving the oh. West Coast Fever. Her con- her manager has informed the club that she mm. will not be seeking She's going to the new, new Melbourne franchise, apparently. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. Um, there's a bit of chatter around Courtney Bruce leaving as well. Um, I did hear that. Yeah. yeah. Well, so that'll be a massive loss. Mass- Sasha's the gun. She's goal attacking, but a gun two point shooter, shooter when that goes into that two point um, uh, period at the end of each quarter. And so, you know, that's where games are won and lost these days. So she's going to be a big loss. 
We've had we've had her in here many times. Yeah, she's she's such, such a great girl. But hopefully she's leaving for the, all the right reasons, and those reasons are money. money. <laughs> yeah. Because there's a new team coming in. Netball has to compete with the yes. other sports, and as we've seen the um, success of the Matildas, and of course the AFLW starts this weekend. There's a lot of money in those sports, yeah, there is. and in particular AFL, they're calling all the time, taking people. If the netball can make sure that they've got. I mean, they've got no money in the bank at the moment, no. but if they can get the right sponsors, which they should have yes. because everyone plays netball. Yep, and they're getting good crowds at the games. Yep, yep. and they tip that into the players, then you've got a big chance of keeping the top-end talent yeah. and, and, and growing that from there. I mean, obviously, we're just going to throw all of our money at Janelle Fowler because you wouldn't want to play against her. No way, <laughs> no reckon? way. Absolutely, I wouldn't want to play against her. We need to keep her here. Absolutely. And a bit of basketball as well. We want to talk about that. Yeah, I watched that last night. It was um, Australia playing Japan over in Japan in the World Championship. So they basketball had to win to progress through to the knockout rounds. Yeah, I, there was a real uh, interesting thing as soon as I turned it over. It was just after half time. Was obviously we're winning, but yeah. there was a just a Caucasian guy playing for the Hawkinson. Japanese team. Hawkinson, the famous <laughs> really Japanese player Hawkinson. And it, not only was he Caucasian, but he was. Super pale. He was. was he like was, he was very white. <laughs> he was, for really the want of a better term. He really was. It's like I, I want to know his story. <laughs> yeah, and I thought oh, he's got to come from America or something. He had game. He was a handy yeah. player. Oh, he was a very good player. Yeah, he had size about him. But it was good to see um, the Aussie guys get up. Josh Giddy called scored twenty six points. Yeah. He had eleven re- uh, yeah. assists. And the other one was Xavier Cooks, who was the NBL's best player last season. Dominated particularly yeah. against our Perth Wildcats. He wasn't Killed quite. Us. Yeah, he wasn't so good against uh, Germany. A few nights ago, but he really he had a great game last night. And Nick Kay, our former Wildcat, he always comes in and he plays international level and he's probably getting paid a million dollars to play in Europe. And yes. he left us, while our Wildcats. Yeah. But he's one of those guys who continually gets 15 points yeah. and, and 10 so rebounds. so reliable, isn't he? Very reliable. He's got an outside shot. But if you are a coach and you've got a guy like him in your team, he's, he seems like the guy who does everything by the book. He's so reliable. And if you're and he's so coachable is probably what the word I was looking for. Apparently, so, yeah. Japan is where we played last. Nikkei. Go. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Hope according some according money, to you know. Wikipedia for what it's worth. Mm. Mm. Shimano right. Susanu magic. Good luck to <laughs> the boomers moving forward. We hope they can medal. Sean Sport is a Nova podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcast.com.au.